Today I'm here with Ashish Mujal of Sunstone University and I'm really excited especially because you have such an interesting institute and uh, you know we really want to know more about it. So without further ado, can you please tell us you know, what was the idea behind Sunstone University and what problem was it that you were looking to solve? As a country, we uh, we are a resource-starved country, although we have a lot of students graduated. But at the same time, if you talk to corporates, they will say that they couldn't find the right right uh, candidates, right? So that's the problem which we wanted to solve for. We wanted to create a sort of uh, institution which can churn out uh, candidates which are ready for the corporates. And this can only happen once uh, once you have, you have integrated yourself well with corporate, your curriculum, your pedagogy, uh, your technological adaptability. Everything has to be uh, completely in sync and uh, sort of state of the art, which is actually making students ready to work in a corporate from day one. You've set up six new campuses and you've seen almost 500% growth. Can you tell us, like, how did that happen? Initial two years, we also wanted to learn the nitty gritties of this industry. What is the critical elements which student needs? What's the thing that corporates are looking for? How you can actually make it a product which is sort of a finished product which can now be scaled aggressively. And now we feel that we have, we have not perfect or perfected but we are almost there we know what students and corporates are looking for and now is the time that we should go aggressively on growing this uh, offering to more and more number of students across the country in different states cities and to more and more number of corporates as well now you have a very interesting payment model it's one of the things that stands out about your university can you tell us a little bit about that by choosing a college, I am basically putting all my eggs in one basket that okay, this is the institution which will provide me the right skill set, which will make me employable. So I, essentially, I'm putting my life on the line with that college or that institution. So that's the thought process that if a student is trusting us so much, we should also put our skin in the game. And which is what we uh, created this model of sort of a pay after placement where if a student pays us some uh, registration amount upfront and then pays majority of the amount uh, before our, uh, before he, uh, after he gets a job or before he graduates, right? So this is, uh, this actually helps us create that trust uh, in the student community very, very quickly. But if you, if you look at that is not what we stand for. So pay after placement is not what we stand for. Pay after placement is just what helps us build that trust in the student community very, very quickly. But we stand for a better education quality or better education outcomes. So that being said, you know, right now we are seeing so many new players in the education sector. And uh, a lot of people are offering courses, especially since you are a uh, business management uh, university, uh, university, that's the term I'll use. Um, but we're seeing a lot of more players in this team and a lot of uh, companies are also willing to accept students who have just done a small course or online course of the same. So given this uh, scenario, how are you building scale? Both Piyush and I, we firmly believe that if you keep your focus true to the student's community, achieving a scale in education is not a problem because the market is very large. It's, we are sitting at one crore enrollment every year, right? So uh, uh, if you are giving them a product which is valuable for the student, if you can make a real meaningful impact in their lives for a long term, you, we are already seeing a lot of positive word of mouth. Uh, we have already seen our organic traffic grow 3x as compared to what we are in our first year. So uh, the the secret sauce is only that you have to be student first. Uh, that's the secret sauce. You know, right now uh, we are seeing a lot of industry collaborations because, like you said, skills have become very important. And if a student is investing their time in a university, they do want to see the outcome, which is getting a nice job. So how how can we get a comprehensive job and skill insight? In the world of internet and in the world of COVID, which we are living right now, things are changing very, very quickly. And we have to be fast, we have to be nimble so that we can adapt to the changing things like uh, sort of in a, in a matter of flash, right? So whether it's about your curriculum, whether it's the pedagogy, whether it's the skill that you're imparting to the students, everything needs to be continuously updated. You always have to be on your toes. You cannot say that, okay, I, I updated my curriculum last year. 
now i'll i'll not update my curriculum this year because last year you would be teaching student that uh, uh, how to behave in a corporate setting how to behave with your peers in an office this year you need to have modules on work from home productivity right so these are the things which you continuously need to update obviously you will not end up updating 100% of your curriculum 100% of your content but every year and that sort of a uh, internal thing that we have realized that every year because when we are updating our curriculum around 20% of the curriculum we keep updating uh, like we keep refreshing or we sort of getting the new sort of curriculum uh, of the 100% 20% end up being new every year right if you actually look at the lot of universities curriculum they are still teaching vat to the student and whereas gst was introduced 5 years ago so this is the kind of adaptability or nimbleness which is actually required because if you continue to teach vat to the student how can they work in a corporate because corporates were push to move to gst 5 year or 4 years ago right so you need to have candidates who are actually well versed with today's concepts you cannot continue teaching concepts which are no use for the student in the future how do you think the perception of education in india has changed over the last 17 years so there is lot of learning that happens outside classroom as well whether it's the extra curricular activities whether it's the peer learning whether it's solving that case studies together and so all of these things are also very very critical elements of education whereas in new way of teaching new pedagogy methodologies you also need to be very very adaptable to the online learning as well and it is actually much more important and critical now because your work as an employee you are working in that environment it's not that you are only studying online and then you have to go and work in an offline environment that's not the case anymore most of the companies are also sort of comfortable with getting that hybrid uh, culture in office as well that you can maybe 3 days work from office 2 days work from home and maybe in certain cases you can uh, if you are uh, at a certain location for a month you can work from there so companies are also warming up to this hybrid sort of a culture when it comes to the overall workforce uh, uh, as well yeah no definitely and that's the positive that's come out of it because it's allowed so many more people to work there are of course downsides to that but we're not going to focus on that today i do want to ask you um you know we've seen the rise of edtech we've seen over the last 17 months really like ex- explosion in edtech what do you think the next step for edtech is do you think there's a third wave coming like when we find a post pandemic when you kind of settle down because right now there's so much going on and not everyone is going to survive right so what do you ha- what do you think is going to happen the way normal will get established and obviously there uh, we, none of us can predict the timeline of it it can be 6 months down the line or it can be 12 months down the line but once the dust settles down and we move back to more and more normal ways of living the way the new normal of education will be will be sort of a mix of online plus offline we will we don't see a huge huge demand of completely online courses we don't see that uh, a full fledged 100% online course taking over the offline or a full time education market but what we see is that education will evolve into a more hybrid sort of programs so the full time programs that we see in current form and shape they will most likely evolve into a more hybrid sort of a program because in education students experience is also very very critical and for lot of students going to college is less of education but more of life stage as well so let's say if i am completing my class 12th am i comfortable pursuing my degree or my college just sitting at my home most probably the answer to that question is no i as a student i won't be that comfortable because when i'm going to college i'm not going to college only to study or learn engineering or learn management i'm going to college to work on myself my self development working on my personality as well so if you ask me i would say maybe 40 50% uh, of education is uh, more academics whereas 50 to 60% education is more outside the classroom right wherein let's say if i am conducting some event i will take the responsibility of conducting that event and then i will drive everything right so this gives me that responsibility this gives me that independence absolutely so the institutions day and the edtech kind of this comes in to fill in the gaps 
um, for example, either it's helping the institutions to deliver the hybrid model or helping students who maybe cannot make it to campuses, people who are returning students, maybe older students, uh, maybe younger children who probably can't go to, uh, go to classes. Uh, so it's basically there, like it'll find its place essentially. Um, is what, yeah, is yeah. what I'm assuming is what you're saying. Um, so I'd like to come down to my last right. question, which is in your personal opinion, what would you like to see change or improve or happen in education from your own experience of going through the whole system? So I personally come from a a tier uh, two kind of a, a tier three kind of a town uh, closer to a city. And I have seen what kind of change education can bring in a human being, right? So I I see myself as an example because I I come from that kind of uh, background. And if I can be transformed with the right given uh, the right education, then any of us can actually be transformed, right? And that's where I see that if we can create that sort of an impact, and obviously uh, uh, there is no limit, there is no headroom to it. The market is very large and if we can if we can even contribute to a very small proportion of the change uh, i think we'll achieve we'll achieve what we set out with which we started for right perfect thank you so much thank you for speaking with me today i think that was very insightful and i think what you're doing is great it's an incredible um, setup and it is helping a lot of people especially those who can't necessarily afford to get a management degree and pay those kinds of fees up front and it really just ensures that people you know, get the education, get what they're paying for, and also get onto a career path um, and go out and reach the goals that they're envisioning for themselves. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Vasudha. It was a pleasure talking to you.